Welcome to the Alliance series of webinars on fundraising for road safety NGOs. Fundraising is the number one challenge for many of our members, particularly those in low-income countries. 44% say that they have less than a year's funding available, and 64% say that their NGO is funded out of their own pockets. This series of webinars draws on the experience of Alliance member NGOs and staff, their successes, failures, and what they have learned from different approaches to fundraising. It also features the funder perspective for FedEx, the sponsor of this webinar series. The aim of this webinar series is, is to build the capacity of road safety NGOs to look at fundraising strategically and in new creative ways. This is done by identifying those organizations and individually, individuals who will support their work and write a compelling proposal that would demonstrate the vital need for road safety interventions and inspire funders to give money. In this first webinar in the series, we would like to welcome Katie Shepherd, Fundraising and Development Director at Alliance Member Break, who will share why you should have a fundraising strategy, how to position fundraising within your organization, and how to write your fundraising strategy. Over to you, Katie. I'm Katie Shepherd. I'm the Fundraising and Development Director at Break, a road safety charity uh, based in the UK and operating globally. And I'm here today to talk to you about writing a fundraising strategy. Break was established about 23 years ago, um, and we have a vision to achieve a world that has zero road deaths and injuries. And we have a goal to enable people to get around in ways that are safe, sustainable, healthy, and fair. So where do we operate? Well, we have an office in the UK and also in New Zealand. We deliver domestic services in both countries and also coordinate global projects for companies, children and communities that are very much aimed at raising awareness about road safety to help keep people safe. We also fundamentally provide support services for families bereaved in road crashes, which includes running a helpline and providing support literature via the police within the UK. We actively campaign for road safety and we engage the media and government to achieve changes in UK laws. We coordinate Road Safety Week in both the UK and New Zealand. I, I've been at Break now for 10 years. I'm the Fundraising and Development Director. So within my remit is the corporate fundraising team, the community fundraising team and the engagement team that work on projects raising funds from communities and schools. So I'd like to first talk to you about why fundraising is absolutely vital to all charities. So what is fundraising? We can define fundraising as the act of seeking financial support for a charity, cause, or other enterprise. So fundraising can take many different forms. It could be a company sponsoring one of a charity's services, an individual making a donation, a school taking part in a project. It could be a community group that's running an event to raise money. It could be a volunteer taking part in a run and getting sponsored. It could be securing money from the government or a grant, perhaps. It could be selling products or having members. The, the key thing to remember is that sometimes charities have many different types of fundraising methods, and sometimes they focus on one or two. The crucial thing that we need to remember about fundraising is that it isn't a dirty word. For me, fundraising is one of the most important and most exciting things that a charity can do because without fundraising, we cannot grow. Without the money that we are generating through our fundraising activity, we cannot develop our charity. We cannot deliver those crucial charitable services. Fundraising needs to be understood and championed by all staff and all volunteers at charities. Anyone who works or volunteers for a charity needs to embrace fundraising as a part of their role. It isn't a dirty word. By increasing the income of the charity, you're securing the future of the charity and helping it grow. So why is a fundraising strategy help, helpful to you? The reality is that writing a good strategy can take time, and we all know that time is precious, especially when working for a small charity. So why should we take the time to listen to this webinar today and then to sit down and write a fundraising strategy? Well, firstly, when you're writing a strategy, you have the opportunity to position fundraising at the heart of the charity and make everyone aware of your activities. I think we're all here today because we know the importance of, of fundraising, but we also need to recognize the importance of ensuring everyone understands fundraising at the charity. 
by having a strategy in place, you have a tool to communicate your fundraising plans to both staff and volunteers. The second reason a strategy is so helpful is because it enables you to plan how you will develop your fundraising activity over time. It enables you to plan how you will increase your fundraising activity and your income. By planning and proactively projecting a growth in income, you then start planning how you can grow your charity overall. The third benefit of writing a fundraising strategy is because when you write it, you have to take the time to reflect on what you're currently doing before you plan what you want to do. So this process will help you identify the areas that you're doing well and help you identify areas that you can improve on. So there's a few key things that you need to consider before you start writing a strategy. There's a few important questions that you have to ask yourself and your other team members. Firstly, you need to consider the time period that the strategy is going to cover. From a personal perspective, I would probably recommend that two or three years would be appropriate because it gives you time to, to plan properly. It gives you time to achieve both large and small developments in fundraising activity, but it isn't so long that you don't have flexibility to change your approach in the future. The next question you need to ask yourself is, are there any other strategies in place? So sometimes charities will have an overarching strategy, sometimes they have strategies that focus on the work that the charity does and specific areas of service delivery. The next question you need to ask yourself is what is your charity trying to achieve for the duration of the strategy period and how much will it cost to achieve it? So if your overarching strategy is to grow, then you need to think about how you are going to fund that and that is what your fundraising strategy should then start to plan. Another crucial thing to consider is what is so special about your charity? What is going to help you achieve your fundraising activity? So road safety charities are doing phenomenal work both in the UK but globally. We are achieving some wonderful, wonderful work. And it's absolutely crucial that you are able to shout loud and proud as a fundraiser about the amazing work that you're doing to help you generate the funds that your charity needs. The final question that you need to ask yourself is, what have you done in the past? What, what have you done well and what are your current strengths? But also, what are your weaknesses and what could you have done better? Where are there opportunities to develop your activity? Where are the fundraising streams under threat and that need replacing in the future? You need to analyze your current situation to make sure that you plan for the future better. So we're going to talk a little bit about what should your strategy document look like? There's traditionally four key sections for a fundraising strategy. The goal, the objectives, how the objectives will be implemented and achieved, and how the performance will be monitored. So I'm gonna talk a little bit around each of these sections to give you an idea about what each one means. The goal. The goal section of the strategy is the part where you explain clearly and simply what you are trying to achieve as part of your strategy. It outlines clearly where you are going and your ultimate outcome at the end of the strategy period. When writing this section, try to ensure that the goal is specific and quantifiable. Try to ensure that the goal is challenging, but also realistic. It's really important when writing your goal that you ensure that it is motivating for the people working on fundraising activity, but not so big that people feel it's unachievable and impossible. So when you're thinking about setting a goal, it needs to be something that is what you are trying to achieve. So a good example of a goal would be that you are trying to increase the amount of income that your charity receives through fundraising. Another good example of a goal is that you're trying to increase the amount of income that you're getting from different areas, from different sources. So a goal could be that you want to achieve more income generated through fundraising in school. So objectives are generally more specific and easier to measure than goals. Put simply, the objectives help you to plan how you will achieve your goal. Before writing your objectives, it is really helpful to reflect on how your charity currently fundraises. You need to think about current strengths and weaknesses of your fundraising activity before you set your objectives. When setting objectives, also consider the time scale of your strategy. The objectives need to be achievable during the period of your strategy. You need to ensure that objectives are specific so that you can monitor how you are performing to them. Vague objectives won't be helpful to you because they won't give clear direction to your activities. So if you've decided that your goal is to 
to get uh, increase income, then you need to define how you're going to do that. So it might be that you define your objective as being that you are going to get companies, more companies donating to you. It might be that if you have decided that your goal is to increase income streams and get different fundraising activity going on, then you might decide that your objective is to have 20 schools doing fundraising activity for you through Dress Down Days. So now we need to write the section of the strategy that focuses on how your objectives will be implemented. In other words, how are you going to achieve your objectives? So this is the practical section of the strategy. In simple terms, it's the to-do list for your strategy. To ensure that this section has clear targets and deadlines. It's also useful when writing this section to allocate tasks to specific people within your organization to ensure you know who is delivering which part of your strategy. Ensure that all tasks are realistic and can happen within the deadlines you've set and with the resources you have available. You need to aim to have at least two or three tasks for each objective, which will collectively ensure that you achieve your objective. So in this next section, you need to decide how your objectives are going to be implemented. So we've talked previously about potentially our objective being that we are going to get 20 schools fundraising for us. So how are we going to achieve that? It might be that we're going to ask 20 volunteers to go into 20 schools and ask them to take part in fundraising activity. So that's this section that you're writing in your strategy. You're writing how are you going to achieve your objective. So if your objective is that you are going to get more companies donating to you, how are you going to do that? It might be that you say within this section of your strategy, I am going to write 20 proposals a week until I increase the number of companies donating. So this is your to-do list. How are you going to achieve what you have laid out within your objective? Once you've decided how you will implement your objectives, you need to decide how you, how you will monitor your performance. This will help you ensure that you are on track and progressing to your objectives and ultimately your goals. Monitor performance in at least one area per task. For some tasks, it might be appropriate to monitor performance in a few different areas. So what's worked for BREAK? BREAK is incredibly fortunate that we have multiple income streams. We have a lot of companies who donate to us who support our services. We have a large community fundraising stream, uh, people who have been affected by road crashes who have used break services. We also receive funding from the government and from a number of, of trusts and grants. But we also talk to individuals, we talk to schools, we talk to communities. We encourage them to fundraise for us. So a lot of the individuals who are supporting us, they've been affected by a road crash. They're very keen to, to give back to break after using the services. And they want to do something that raises money for us. So there's a lot of different things that they can do. They can get a bucket and go out into their local community and ask for money in the street. That, that's one thing that they can do. They can get sponsored to take part in an event. So that means that they're, they're taking part in a challenge event, something that, that's quite difficult. It might be doing a really long run. It might be doing a parachute jump. It might be that they're um, doing a, a really long swim. There's, there's a whole raft of ideas where they're challenging themselves to do something and they're getting sponsored to do it. So they're talking to their friends, to their family, to people that they work with, and they're asking for money. They're getting sponsored in return to do this challenge. And that's a great way to break fundraisers because actually people want to support each other. We also get communities fundraising for us. So they might run a local event like a football match or a music event or a talent show, and they sell tickets. And people want to come along because they're giving to charity, but they're also having fun. So it's a great way to get people in the local community supporting your charity, but also having fun while they're doing it. So you might want to think when you're exploring different fundraising ideas about what kind of events could you be running or what kind of events could your volunteers be running? Do you have somebody who, who really wants to put on a comedy show perhaps? Or you could screen a film in the local community and sell tickets and people could bring a picnic. There's so many ideas that you could run this fantastic event, perhaps even just a dinner where you sell places and people come along for a great night out and that raises money for your charity. But it's all about asking the community to give back to you. Don't forget that road safety affects 
everybody. And so it's really important to be shouting about your charity and getting those local communities involved. You can also be thinking about schools. Perhaps there's ways for schools to support you. So we run different events within schools where they are, the children are getting sponsored, they're taking part in, in, in a sponsored walk or perhaps doing a bake sale. We have over 100,000 kids all at the same time on the same day taking part in a, in a walk and it's a great way to raise money for break but also get, getting kids thinking about the charity, thinking about road safety, understanding about how to cross the road safely. When you're thinking about company fundraising, it's not just about that company signing a check for you and making a large donation. There's also so things that companies could do as part of the fundraising for you. So you could perhaps get a raffle where you sell tickets and people can win prizes. You could perhaps get a company to do a quiz for the staff and all staff have to donate a pound to take part and somebody wins a prize. You could get do a dress down day where staff are wearing a silly outfit and they all have to donate some money to come to work in a silly outfit for the day. There's lots of opportunities for you to be think, exploring to raise money. In England, for example, we run a Road Safety Heroes Day where people get dressed up as superheroes, you get to wear a cape to work, you donate a pound, and it's all about raising money for the charity. But it's also about raising awareness of your charity and making people think about who you are and why it's so crucial to support us. So when writing your strategy, I would urge you to explore different opportunities to fundraise. You can proactively look to engage with communities, with schools, with individuals. So when you're thinking about fundraising, there are so many options. You don't just need to get the corporate donations. You don't just need to go to grants and, and foundations. Think about how individuals can support you. Think about opportunities for somebody to, to bake a cake that they could sell and in, in return for money for your charity. So this, just think a little bit creatively when you're pl planning your fundraising activity. Uh, so a few final top tips from me before you start work on the strategy. Firstly, I'd urge you to talk to people in your, in your organization. You can't write the document all by yourself. It needs to be a collaborative effort with people consulted from all areas of the charity. You need to look at what other organizations are doing. It's a great idea to research other organizations' successful fundraising activity and use the research for inspiration. Look at opportunities to grow and increase income streams. The strategy should outline your plans for development and growth. That means existing income streams and new areas for growth. Make sure you draw on what you're already doing well, but don't be afraid to try new avenues. You need to use simple language so everyone understands it. Your strategy should be accessible and understood by everyone in your organization. Make sure it's clear and simple what you want to do and how you want to do it. And finally, use it. It should be a living, breathing document. There's no point writing a strategy if you don't keep using it and referring back to it. Make sure you have a plan in place to use the document, to implement all the tasks you're suggesting, and to monitor performance. You won't achieve your goal if you're not referring back to your strategy and using it. Fundraising is an exciting, exciting activity for your charity to be embracing. It's the opportunity for your charity to develop new income streams, to raise awareness about your cause, and to ultimately grow your charity. So I'd like to say a huge good luck from me in writing your strategy, in implementing new, new fundraising activity. I hope it goes well for you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Katie. Should you wish to learn more, we have collected a number of resources for you to explore further. You can find them on our website, which is shown here. This is also where you put your question or evaluate the webinars. This webinar is available online and you can go back and listen to it as many times as you like. Should you wish to learn more, we have collected a number of resources which can be found, found on our website. Thank you for listening and have a safe day.